Hello there, this is Mark Morgan, and I'm going to do a brief walkthrough of some ways that you can safeguard your newly unblocked student Mac computers. There have been several concerns uh, in the past. One was that students' computers were so locked down for safety's sake that teachers were unable to even install or delete programs from it or make any system settings changes or adjustments as needed while students were working on the machines, and this created huge delays during class. So, with the newly unleashed student iMacs, we've got both good and good things and challenging things. The good is that we have flexibility to install as the teacher pleases, and we have teacher control over settings. The challenge comes from worrying about things like icon deletion or program deletion, student tampering, and how does one actually go about installing programs in the, in the best manner. So we're going to co cover those right now. Okay, so accidental program deletion. Let's take a look at that. What I'm referring to especially has to do with icons inadvertently being deleted from the dock. This is the dock down here. And how many of you have seen this? You have a student on the machine, they come crying to you because suddenly they say they tried to click on an icon and instead it went up into a poof of smoke. Well, they weren't exaggerating. Look at this icons icon here. There is actually a little cloud of smoke forming, and as soon as I let go, watch what happens. It literally disappeared into a poof of smoke. So they come running to you, and you're like, oh my goodness, I have no idea what you did, and I don't know how to get my program back. Well, it's actually very simple. You have not deleted the program. You can reassure the student that they have not destroyed anything. All they've done is gotten rid of the pointer to that program. The sad thing is, is that Mac doesn't tell you. It doesn't say... When it goes poof, it doesn't say you can restore this by going to the Applications folder. Unfortunately, it just leaves you to panic. Here's the solution. We're going to go to Finder, which is Mac's equivalent of My Computer. lets you look at your computer's files. Let me show you that again. I'm going to go to Finder. That's the little icon down here with the face. And then we're going to go to Applications folder, which will show up here on the left. And within that folder, you simply find the application that you lost in this case iTunes. I'm going to simply click it, hold my mouse button, button down or my trackpad button down, drag it to the dock, dock and release. Okay, and just that quickly, there is my poofed icon. Let's poof it again. Sure enough, cloud of smoke. How do I get it? Finder, Applications folder, find your app, drag it back to the dock, and you are done with the panic and you can remind your student how not to do that and uh, I like to tell kids click don't drag on icons click don't drag all right okay the second concern is that uh, on these newly unlocked or unleashed student iMacs suddenly while the teacher has access to the system preferences or program or computer settings so do the students so they can either now they can either inadvertently make changes that are not wanted or you might have a little mini hacker who likes to get in there and cause mischief well what we're going to do is we're not going to block it completely but we're going to take it kind of out of sight so i'm talking about system settings tampering in this case they call it system settings we get to system settings one of system preferences one of two ways either by hitting the little cog wheel icon or by going to the Apple menu. Come on, Apple menu. Uh -oh. Why don't we get an Apple? There we go. System preferences that way. Now, this is what the student is presented with, and that's kind of scary because we have important things like iCloud, mail, and network, sharing folders, etc. What people don't know about is that in the View menu, there's a Customize button, okay? So I'm going to take out some of the most scary uh, categories in Internet and Wireless. I'm going to take out Network. I'm going to take out the Sharing folder. I'm just going to leave Bluetooth. Now watch what, I, not, watch what happens when I click Done. Suddenly, when they click on System Preferences, all they get are the choices that you selected to allow them to see. So if they need to collect them connect a wireless mouse or some other Bluetooth device, for example, you can let them do that. Okay, 
and then these others are no longer visible and much less likely to be tampered with. But let's go ahead and make all of these disappear. If you really want to be safer, I'm going to uncheck each and every one of these boxes. And you might decide you want to do this just to, just, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and uh, less likely to be inadvertently or de deliberately tampered with. The good news here is that by unchecking these, you are not preventing yourself from intervening when settings changes are needed. Let me show you how that's done. So I'm going to click the Done button here. Now suddenly when they click on System Preferences, that's all they get. They're going to get an empty box. <clears throat> and in fact, a window with just a, a title and no, no contents. Well, all you have to do is go to the View menu. You've got one of two ways. You can either click the View menu and click Customize and put that checkbox back in there. But there's a faster way than that. Let's go to the View menu. And this time, notice that all of those icons are here. Let's go to, for example, the dock settings. It brings up the dock settings. I can now shrink the dock, make changes as I please, and then simply close it. And once again, when they go to System Preferences, none of those are visible. Now, is this completely preventing them from, from tampering? No, it is not. But for most Mac users, they are completely unaware of this feature of the View menu. And uh, that's just a little safeguard that helps lessen the, the chance for tampering. Okay, that brings us to our third section, which is program installation. With Lion OS and Mountain Lion OS, a really cool feature has been added, and that is use of the Mac Store. You've heard of the App Store for iPhones and uh, iPads and iPod Touch. Well, they have a similar store, and one of the beauties of the App Store for iPods and iPads is that you buy it once, and then you can install it on any number of devices that are under your direct control. Well, in the case of Macs, Mac computers, this is also true. So I'm going to click on the App Store, and if it's the first time that you've used it, the first thing you'll want to do is go to Store, and I'm going to pretend that I haven't signed in, so I'm going to sign out. I'm going to go to Store, Sign In, and this is where you need to enter your Apple iTunes or your Apple ID. And then enter your password. And once you've entered that, you can then go into categories. And in this case, I'll go ahead and look at uh, education. By the way, don't feel limited to education. There are a lot of great other apps like in productivity for the word processing, etc. But let's find, uh, let's just find a quick freebie here. If we can see if we can find one. Here's one called Ribbit. Go ahead and hit install. And and just that quickly, I have I'm it's now installing the app. And the beauty of this is that on your additional iMac computers or other Apple computers within your classroom, you can simply log into your account and it will allow you to download those. Uh, onto additional machines under your control at no additional charge. Just like the App Store for iPads and iPod Touch. Okay, so those are the three biggies. Uh, one of the reasons we unlocked these was that you could do program installation. Accidental program deletion. Remember that if you make an icon go poof off of your desktop, you simply go to Finder Applications, find the application icon and drag it back down. And then a little reminder on system preferences. <clears throat> we have simply unchecked by going to the view menu within system preferences, customize, taken off those checkboxes of the ones we want to hide, and clicking done. And just one last review, go to the view menu, gives you access to all of them at any time. Okay, so I hope you find this helpful. I would highly recommend that you do this on your machine so that you feel in control, but also that you're protected from unwanted tampering and accidental mistakes by students. Okay, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.